everyone, welcome to Studio Sunday. I hope all is well in your world. We're busier than ever here in the studio. Terry is hard at work on Parker Girls number seven. Parker Girls number six will be in stores and on our website on Wednesday the 29th. Parker Girls Dead Quiet was released Wednesday and is available in stores and on our site. It's the first five issues, so check it out if you need to catch up. That was a lot of Parker Girl, Parker Girl, Parker Girl stuff. Well. That's the one in production. Yes, it is. We are also uh, busy planning for C2E2 in a couple of weeks. We'll be in Chicago March 31st through April 2nd. We'll be in Artist Alley at Table Z, as in Zebra 11. Terry will have sketches, original art, and lots of books. Uh, we'll be bringing a little bit of everything, so come on by. We'd love to see you. It's one of our favorite shows, and we have been away for three years. Wow. Yeah. I don't think I remember the way to Chicago. <laughs> you don't have to worry about that. Right. Somebody else will get me there. Yes. So we're really happy to be going back. So uh, come and see us. We're excited. Thank you again for everyone that supported the Terry Moore After Dark Kickstarter. Terry's drawing like crazy, and there will be some beautiful new sketches in that book. I think this may be the nicest book we've ever published. Yes, I think so, too. You know, with the stretch goals, with the nice paper... The, the bookmark, ribbon bookmark. The bookmark and yeah. the, the spot, uh, spot gloss. gloss. I know. Just gorgeous. So I think it's going to be great. Yeah. So surveys are not quite ready. I've been working with Backer Kit on getting them just perfect so that uh, we don't have any issues when they're finally sent out. They will definitely be going out this week, and Terry will do an update to everyone who pledged when they go out. Because this is our first Kickstarter, it's taking a bit longer to get up to speed on all this but I'd rather everything be right than have problems on the back end. So um, and I had originally said they would go out on Friday, but I think it'll probably be late this week before they go out. Backer Kit is very specific. They don't want bad surveys going out, so. And if you backed our Kickstarter, why do you need the survey, babe? Well, because it just is a, a I don't know. <laughs> Does everybody need to fill that out, or can they just toss it in the circular file? No, it's really, if we don't have the survey, we can't get your book. Oh. This is what Backer Kit sends us to let us know that you purchased one of the tiers, so or backed one of the tiers. So if you don't turn in your survey, we don't know to send you a book. Hmm. And it just asks questions like, is this the correct address? Is this what you ordered? Is this what you backed? Mm -hmm. So... Um, so you do want so to So you have to do your survey or you won't get a book. And that's what that's the next phase. That's what we're waiting on is surveys. Yeah. Okay. So surveys late this week for sure. Okay. Thank you everyone for your patience. We'll get this we'll get this up to speed. Mm -hmm. And then the books will be off to the printer pretty soon. Excellent. So um anyway, that's all I have this week. Do you have anything to add, Mr. Moore? Um Yes, I had a lot going on this week, but I can't talk about it yet. Because well, then, you're, then you don't have anything project, to add. No, nothing's happening. <laughs> nothing's happening. All's quiet here. Look away. You weirdo. <laughs> okay, so let's get on the hot seat. Okay. The first question came from YouTube, and Bill Strat is his, uh, what do you call that? Handle. Handle. Ask, why can't we see Robin? I'm going to answer this question. First, I prefer you focus on the star of the show instead of the backstage team. You know, I would really hate to upstage Terry with all my dazzling beauty, you know, so I prefer to stay behind the camera. You know, it would be embarrassing. I mean, the camera would just automatically be drawn to me. No, yes, so, they would. And, and they would forget all about your, your work. Your, just like in real life. <laughs> but they know you run the show. They know you're the star. I, so I just did. It's just easier for me not to be on camera because I really don't want to steal your thunder. Well, the truth is, most of the time she's in her jammies or, <laughs> you know, her not in the snorkeling outfit, you know. <laughs> so yeah, okay. I, I get on camera during Terry Moore Live. Yeah, that's your chance. So in October, stay tuned. If you want to see Robin, come see us at a show. <laughs> there you go. Okay, your second question I think we've uh, kind of touched on before, but uh, you might think about how 
how this relates to the book you're doing right now. Mm. Most of your panels are very uniform. When do you decide to vary layouts, such as adding a splash page? Um, you don't do very many splash, splash I, pages. I don't, and I did do splash pages uh, frequently in Strangers in Paradise, and when it came time, it's ironic, this is something nobody ever thinks about, but when it came time to switch um, that those those books and put them together in a collection, a big book, it became super important that I get the original, like if it was a left page or a right page, it became super important that I maintain that in the omnibus so that when I got to a splash page, it was on the correct page. And uh, especially if it's a double splash, of course, <laughs> these things become important and they're, they're kind of a pain, uh, you know, when you're having to think, well, you have to go back 40 pages to get the pagination right to make sure you get to the splash page correctly in the omnibus here. Um, so that's a small thing that people don't think about when they're making a comic book, but uh, I tend to work in more of a medium close-up framing because I'm doing a lot of emotional storytelling and I want you to be able to read the face. And it's hard to do when everybody is, uh, you know, wide shot and looking at them in a parking lot. But I have a, uh, four pages here, and it starts off in a medium close-up and gets closer. <laughs> um, and then I'll balance that in the next Are page. Are you cracking yourself up? I'm cracking myself. I just think it's funny. <laughs> come on. Uh, but like in the one that's about to come out, Parker Girl 6, there are quite a few establishing shots because um, it, there's a scene that happens out at sea, and I need you to get the scope, you know. But then you come in close and you're on the fishing boat. Spoilers and, here. Yeah, submarine. There's a you know, submarine, <laughs> aliens, yeah. <laughs> um, I just have fun with it. And I'm, mostly I just play with whatever looks good for that moment. Um, but I am just as driven by storytelling as I am by old fashioned comic craft of like, you know, establishing close, closer, splash, establishing close, closer, splash. I don't follow the rules. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's it for me. What are you drawing today? Uh, well, there's a, uh, Robin suggested that I talk about this because she sees me dealing with it a lot, particularly not so much in storytelling pages, but in um, sketches where I have two figures. It's it's easy to draw one figure relatively. What's hard is putting another one next to it. And especially like if it's Francine and Cachou where they have a set size differential. Um, not you're just making it up and they can be whatever. This is, everybody knows Cachou is here and Francine is here size wise. So you have to get that right. And, um, and, and also it gets more complicated whether they're just standing there or whether they're all entangled. Um, trying to get all that to look right. So I thought I'd talk about that in, in, in a sketch and draw. In a it, sketch and draw? In a sketch and draw, where it's like show and tell, but we sketch and draw. Okay, good. We sketch and draw in ink and pencil. And I'm gonna talk about how to get two figures right on the page without having it out of way, out of whack. So, okay, meet me here. Drawing this cover with one figure is relatively easy. All you do is focus on one perfect figure. This is easy, so to speak, compared to this. This is hard. <laughs> this is harder to draw than this. This is one figure and then a lot of inking. This is penciling two figures. One of them is five feet four, the other is five feet ten. Every nothing matches from the shoulders, the, the nose, the chins, the head sizes, uh, the neck lengths, nothing matches all the way down. So there is no symmetry, but it ha but you will see it instantly if it's wrong. Another example. Okay, that's easy. One figure in front of a mountain. Okay, that's hard. <laughs> All these figures, just about everybody in my little world, and they're all standing on the 
picture a set, a stage set. They're standing there, the camera's on a ladder, and you're shooting down. So not on, now, not only do I have this eye level um, height and size differential, but now I have to do it from a camera angle going down. So I'm thinking about the shoulder lengths, who is the tallest, who is the shortest, and doing all this measuring stuff as I go. This was easy um, because it's one figure and the other figure is further back. So it's Kachu and Earl from Rachel Rising. And then there's a third figure way back here. You can do no wrong. You can really do no wrong here. This was relatively easy because I just make Kachu the size I want her to be. And then all these strangers can be whatever size I happen to draw them. Aha! See the difference? These strangers can be any size I draw them. It's going to work out fine. Children, adults, short people, tall people. It's not the same thing as we know exactly how tall all these people are and the relativity needs to be there. So you have to get it right. This is a totally different drawing assignment than this. So look at where... Look at where the knees are, knee, hip. Um, her feet are really close to those feet, so look how much higher her knees are than Franz Kachu's knees. This is a much taller person with longer legs, knees, hips, like that. And then the body block is there, the body block is there. See, I'm thinking about that the whole time I'm drawing. <clears throat> so. I think probably what I did on this drawing was I drew Kachu first and then I backed up and then I started drawing Francine and I started blocking off these height differentials knowing that uh, Francine is basically, how tall is she compared to Kachu exactly? That was, again, you have to get 5'4 into the, under the arm of 5'11, you know, uh, thinking about that. How tall is she exactly? There, that's how tall she is. Uh, basically the same floor space. David's now a little bit back. Francine, Kachu, David. Um, but you can see exactly where everybody's hips are, where their knees are, Kachu's hips, comparative. Um, and then Kachu's shoulders, comparative. See what I mean? So that's what I have to bear in mind every time I get any of these people starting to pretzel together. <laughs> the times that they were hanging on to each other. Um, this is That's when it gets tricky. They're just standing apart right now, or sitting apart. Oops, everybody's going on the floor. Uh, sitting apart when you're, they're sitting not straight, but also slumped. So how, how tall would they sit? There's two different postures there too. So, whereas her legs have to go, her feet have to go under the rungs of the stool, her legs go all the way down. And she's slumped as well, but not slumped as much as uh, Miss Bad Attitude over here. <laughs> this was a very funny issue. This one cracked me up. It was so fun to draw. Uh, that's easy because it's in perspective. It goes smaller, smaller, smaller. It's easier to draw these big figures up front and then the ones on the back. Uh, there's the same thing again from behind. Um, you can see exactly the measurements there. If you're walking behind them um, at the mall, that's what you see. Um, okay, entanglement. One leaning over the other. Uh, when they get really close, it gets more critical. Knowing what we know now, you can picture how I drew that. Um, this one is actually not that hard to draw. I drew a perfect Casey on sitting, and then I just drew the guy that was required to get underneath there. <laughs> the size guy that I needed. Uh, so he's probably, you know, six feet, six feet one. Uh, that wasn't that hard to draw. There's one specific one I want to show you. Um, there's the cast. 
And this was a lot easier because it was uh, eye point of view. And I am basically uh, starting with my stars in the middle front row right here. And I, I'm doing the size differentials. And then when you go to the back, um, I don't have to worry about the bodies to make it work. I just know that if they were standing there, their heads would be about this tall compared to the guys in the front, right? This is harder to draw than one figure standing alone because now I need to have um, David, who's like 5'11", Kachu, who's like 5'4", and Kachu is hold, hugging his back and wrapping herself around him. Um, trying to find the proper size. You know, if you get it right, it looks like, oh, you just copied a photograph. It's just, what's the problem? If you get it wrong, you think it, it's just the whole magic uh, illusion is, is, is gone. Um, so drawing Kachu and then thinking about where David's back would be on her and where his shoulder line is to there and then getting the rest of David proportioned into that, what's going on in their uh, torsos, um, and getting them next to each other and getting them the right size. Um, it's just, it's something you have, it's something you figure out with the pencil. All three of them walking uh, together. And I, I did a little one, a uh, little back, back thing like that. Francine's in front. I thought it was kind of nice to have it like that. Um, but it's really easy to see that there are size differentials here. Don't make everybody the same size. Don't give them all the same body. There's a good example, too, of um, three of them lying, David on the lying down prone, sitting, sitting on the floor in two different positions. So one slumped over, one leaned back, and trying to get the sizes to all match. Okay, why does this have to be so critical? All the way through the story, I'm going to have people standing next to each other. And then the heads. Usually, in my stories, it's like this with the um, uh, waist up. And once in a while, you'll get a wider shot. Uh, Casey on her knees with David on the couch. I picked a very emotional issue to show you here, um, but anyway, uh, walking. That's to me. That's what five ten looks like when it's walking. When five feet ten inches of Francine is walking, that's the image I get, and then up the stairs. Um, and these were all relatively easy. There, I had to draw the size between Francine and David. And Francine is actually taller than David. So when you're, once you get past like, you know, oh, they're just standing their covers, you get into the action inside of a book. And here's where it matters. Instead of looking at the story as an artist, you're thinking, I have five feet, four inches uh, standing up, pointing at five feet, 10 inches sitting on the floor. Um, and she is, say, um, 130 pounds, 135 pounds, and she is, say, um, 185, maybe. Um, that's what you have to think about as you're drawing. Talking heads is just like, you know, okay, get your TV ratio right. I hope that it helps to just to show, to tell you the point of view when I'm drawing how I managed to get this stuff uh, sized. I hope that helps. It would take days. It would it would be a whole art course just to get into how we're drawing these characters and actually physically get out the pencil and just start drawing. Man, it would it would take all day to draw, you know, two or three characters to show you how I'm erase, draw, erase, draw, erase, draw, and until I get it to where it just kind of looks right. Um, I don't have any math formula for it. If one's five six, one five ten, one five four. Uh, you you're using your eye. You're judging your eye. I don't get out a ruler and do it with inches, you know, five inches, six inches, four inches. I don't do that. It's all by eye, and uh, whatever you'll when it looks right, it looks right. If it's not right, it looks wrong, 
and you just keep erasing until it looks right. That's the sad truth. And this has been a drop cat production. Um, you know, so I hope, I hope this has been of some use. And please be uh, uh, aware that Aunt Libby shoots at UFOs, so don't fly your drone over her house. Okay, that's your last safety tip.